Hey folks, um, I thought I would do a quick overview of how I have set up um, OmniFocus just as in one example of a way to use the system um, for anybody who's interested. So first off, um, I, I recommend starting by setting up a fairly simple folder structure for where you're going to organize your various lists of things. Um, I think having too many different layers of folders can be excessive, so I don't have that many, but I do have a root folder for all my move on work and for all personal stuff. And just to say personally, I find tracking all of the things I have to do, even if they're personal things, just, you know, it's all stuff I have to do. So it's easier for me to keep it all in here and not just the work stuff. So within my move on folder, um, I have a miscellaneous uh, single action um, list that is doesn't have any particular specific project that I put stuff in. And then I have folders for each, what I would say, sort of realm or sort of major area that is going to be perpetually true. So for example, I have a folder for all the stuff that I do to stay organized uh, that I'm going to want to keep staying organized forever. It's not a thing that ends. So that's why, that's my sort of rule of thumb for a folder is something that for the foreseeable future, you're going to keep needing to manage that thing. So um, I have one for my transition process set of move on, which is obviously is a somewhat time delimited, delimited, delimited thing, but um, uh, just made sense as sort of a, a bucket to put all the different things in. And then for the realms that um, are part of my job description and part of my role, I have one folder for each. Sometimes I might have um, a folder within those, but mostly what I do within each of these is just have um, uh, a a project for each of the, the various sub, each of the different things that I'm taking on within that realm. So for example, within transitioning out of move on, I have a project of prepare my successor, which um, includes all the different things that I want to do to prepare the next person who's going to come in to take over a lot of my job. Um, and so this is where I, you know, as we talk, I'll talk about later, this is where I collect anything that's going to be in that. And then on a regular basis, usually once a week, I look through all of the things. This is just sort of the full dump of all of my things that I want to do. And I will assign priority and I will uh, make sure that I've got due dates and, and so on. But, but that's the basic way I set it up. So the folders for realms within that, like one project per uh, per thing that you that you're doing within that realm, you know, that has a goal, that has a specific um, uh, desired outcome, and then you'll see that sometimes there are there are like projects and sub projects. So there's a sort of project of you know things that I want uh, to to leave my successor to think about um, that I'm not going to really solve before they come, and then within that I put a bunch of different subheadings for those things just as a way of keeping it organized. So that's the first thing I would set up some, I would suggest setting up some folders. I think the other thing um, that not everybody uses, but I find is still pretty useful is, is contexts. Now contexts are essentially, and you can see here on the left side of the screen, is just what you're going to need or where you're going to need to be in order to do uh, a various thing. So it's another sort of um, uh, set of criteria to attach to, to a given task. Um, now, for us, like, you know, almost everything is, is I have to be at my computer to be doing it. So the biggest context for me um, is Mac. Uh, I don't find it's been very useful for me, at least, to subdivide that, like to say, oh, when I'm in the mail tool, you know, because I just find that the truth is, is that is that um, having like uh, the, the, this various context within my Mac, the truth is, is that I can move back and forth so quickly between them that that like grouping stuff, all the stuff I want to do in the mail tool just doesn't, hasn't made sense to me. But I do need to have my computer. Um, some people have like this with internet access as well. So like internet, um, because you might be sometimes, you know, have things that you can do whether you're hooked up to the internet or not. And it might be, there'll be times when you'll not be hooked up to the internet and it'll be good to know which things you can do without the internet. The main way that I use this that I find still useful is is for a fairly small minority of the things I put in, but still some, like there are some things I literally have to be at my desk to do because they involve like say physical paper, things that are in my, you know, paper files, or um, there are calls I need to make that I can really make from anywhere. There are things that I can do anywhere. Maybe they're just things to think about and they don't necessarily require even the computer. There are 
Aaron's, you know, things like if I'm going to be in Brooklyn, it's great to pull up a list of the things that I wanted to do next time I was in Brooklyn. Um, and obviously you can subdivide that for different neighborhoods and, you know, uh, and there's also things for people. So I, I keep a list, for example, of things that I want to talk to Amy about. So then when I'm on the phone with her, I can pull up that list and just hit all those things and not have to like have those be separate conversations. So that's how I set up context. I, again, I don't recommend that you have a gazillion of these, but I think if there are particular people that you want to keep an agenda, a running agenda for um, errands and so forth, it can be, it can be useful. So that's the basic setup. Um, I also have set up some, some different perspectives, which um, I find really useful just as part of my daily process. And um, I'll uh, share how I've set each of these up. Um, what I do, the first thing I do every day is I go to this daily review perspective. And the daily review perspective, essentially, um, I have a, uh, perspectives is, is a, um, you, you can sort of set various, uh, like, filters and groupings and like how you want the window to look. And then you can save that window as a perspective, either uh, one of the, replacing one of the pre-existing ones, or you can create a new perspective and give it a name and an icon, which is what I've done. The daily review one basically has um, a bunch of different things that just pop up for me every day. So it's the first thing I do every morning. So I come in, I just sort of sit down, I think about what do I need to do today uh, and just do a quick sort of, you know, collection of my thoughts that go into the, the OmniFocus inbox. Um, then I go to my uh, move on inbox and um, I go through the, the various emails and, and decide what, if anything needs to be done with them. Um, so uh, my rule of thumb is that if, if it's something that can just take a, like two minutes or less, um, I, I usually uh, just go ahead and do it. So happy birthday, Doug. Hope it's a good one. Okay, send and archive, and then that's done. It doesn't go on my system. Um, there are things that I will just scan for a minute or so just so I am informed, you know, as I move along. Um, uh, I have, um, as part of my, so there'll be drafts in here and here's what I do about drafts just to save time is I actually have a give feedback to drafts and other emails and requests, uh, set up to pop up into my inbox, in my to-do list, uh, throughout the day. It's, it's sort of preset to come in. And so what that means is that, is that I know I'm going to check, like, what are the most recent drafts that need, you know, some attention. So what I'll do when, um, when I see a draft in my inbox, I'll give a quick look to see like, oh, is this something I should give feedback on right now? Like, is this really pressing? So um, uh, Maria's looking for feedback on this by four o'clock Eastern. So I know that, that I'll do another uh, sweep of, of drafts before then. So I'm just gonna archive this because what'll happen when I get to the drafts moment is I'll actually look at move on drafts and see all of them and choose which ones that I wanna do. So. I don't need to, to do anything with this right now or make a special task just for it because it'll pick it up in that sweep, so I just archive it. Um, so this is just an email about an event. I'll scan it. Um, so then there'll be emails like, like <laughs> this sample one here where there's clearly something I need to do. So you know I skim through the background information. The person usually gives a rationale, and somewhere in there is actually what they want you to do. So... What I do in these is that I want to create an actual task, right? And so um, I have a, a, a bookmark, a, a, um, a snippet thing that, that you can, there's a Chrome extension. If you go to, uh, where is it, Chrome extensions and search for OmniFocus, there's one called Send to OmniFocus, and I highly recommend it if you're using Chrome. Because um, what it does is you just click on it, it sometimes thinks it's an unsafe script and you have to tell it, no, it's okay. But anyway, so I have to do that. And then you click on it and it creates a, um, uh, a quick entry uh, thing. So um, it just by default says, you know, read whatever the thing is. I usually replace that and say, uh, do very important thing. And um, 
if there is a project, then I'll go ahead and, and you know, that you can pull up the list of your, of your active projects here, or you can just start typing. Um, in this case, um, there is no active project for this, uh, since it actually doesn't really exist, so I'll just put it in my miscellaneous to-do list stuff. Um, context, this is going to be something I'll do at my Mac, which is where 95% of stuff goes. Um, let's say uh, there's a due date of today. Um, I'll put that in as well. Um, if there isn't any any um, uh, any hard deadline on it, then I won't put anything in there, and I'll just pick it up in my next review. But um, oftentimes I won't do a full review except once a week. So if this is something that even if it's not there's not a hard due date, I really want to make sure I'm gonna I'm gonna like look at it more as quickly. Then I'll flag it. Um, and not necessarily make it due, or I might do both. Um, so I I, de I tend to use the due dates as a as a like a re like as something that's real, not like oh I should probably look at this today. Like that to me is a bad practice to, to actually arbitrarily sort of give things due dates to kind of goose yourself along. To me, you should set it up so that the things that you really should be getting to but aren't there is no hard and fast due date. Um, there should be a way of reviewing those so you can decide, you know, you can give them energy, but not to sort of arbitrarily create due dates that, that aren't actually real. So if this is just something that I need to get to as soon as possible, I'll probably just flag it like that. Okay. So in any case, that's the daily review. You go, I go through my inbox and I, I snip the things and bring them over here. Um, I look at my calendar for the day and, and sort of get a sense of the actual hard landscape of what um, I'm doing that day. I'll go to the OmniFocus inbox where, where there may be things that I have just, you know, during a previous brain dump just sort of popped in. Sometimes when I'm on the phone with people and, you know, Amy wants me to, um, you know, send a report um, to all staff on council inventory. I won't actually fill out like what project that is and when it's due and everything. I'll just jot down the note and leave it in the inbox um, so that then I can, next time I do the sweep through, which is twice a day, I can actually fill out what needs to be done there. But I don't want to do it while I'm on the phone with Amy because I'll be distracted. Um, then I have, um, oops, well, anyway. Um, Review waiting for. So these are things that, that I, I have a special um, view for waiting. Um, and these are things that uh, they're not active right now because I, I, I'm sort of waiting for something to happen. But I want to just take a look at those and think, oh, maybe I need to follow up with Julie P. about that, that Nevada Council today. It's been a few days and she hasn't gotten back to me. So it's just good, to, good practice to review those once a day and see if there's something that you need to take action on. Um, I remind myself to do an SVN update, to look at bounces, and then there's the giving feedback to drafts and other emails, which which I have pop up twice a day so that they'll remind me to go look at um, uh, emails that um, are looking for feedback and other stuff. Um, okay, so that's so that's um, uh, that's the daily review. Um, the next thing that I do is 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 just look at all the things that. Um, are due for a given day, and I have two tabs for this. One which is all due, which is going to include things that are still, you know, pending or waiting on other things to be done, just to get the full landscape. But mostly, I'm going to look at the things that I can actually do right now that are that are due today, um, because those are often going to be the things I'll do first. Um, I also will look. I have a tab set up here for priorities, which are things that I've flagged. Now, many of these things don't actually have a due date, or the due date is some is not like today, but I want to look at these because at some point I thought these are things that I really want to give energy to, and I'll review that and decide, are the, you know, is this the list of things, like, are any of these things that, that you know, I want to give energy to today, especially after I finish the, the, the stuff that's, that's due. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll just take a look at, at my full project list, and I'll go through and just quickly scan like a key project, you know, um, to see, uh, you know, is there anything here that I that I want to give extra attention to and sort of put on my on my sort of daily hot list. The daily hot list are things that um, I've indicated are are due today and that are also flagged. Like that's that almost always is sort of the things I'll do first in a day. Once I've got all those things done. So right now, sharing how-tos with all staff, I'm almost done with that. Um, I will then shift to sort of looking at, 
you know, what's due but I haven't flagged because I want to make sure I get to that before the end of the day. And then I'll look at the priorities, which are the things that I've flagged that maybe don't have an imminent due date, but I want to get to them. So that's the basic thing. And then, you know, I, I, that's my sort of my approach. Um, uh, I also, you know, once a week, I will look at my full project list. And the difference between the full project list and the projects available is that this will include things that, that I've put a hold on. Like, I'm not actually planning to work on it right now, but I think once a week I look at those and I think, huh, maybe it's time I actually bump that up and do an active thing. You know, but this is a way I try and I don't always succeed, but I try to make the active project list not too overwhelming. So it's something I can really review, you know, in 20 minutes or so and, and make some decisions for the day. Um, like I said, sometimes it gets a little bit big. And then actually uh, when I come to here, there might be a bunch of things that I will, you know, uh, indicate, you know, should be on hold and, you know, waiting for uh, when I'm going to have time and energy to put into that. So that's the basic approach. Um, I hope it's been useful. Um, feel free to let me know if you have any questions.